Timothy also with 9533 Training Consulting. And I want to talk to you about that question I get quite a bit that people ask me from being a boat guy is, you know, have you ever gotten seasick? Um, you know, they think that, oh, you know, you're a, you're a swick, you're a boat guy and you know, you don't get seasick. Yes, I have. Absolutely. I actually carry Dramamine with me uh, in my pack all the time because the operation doesn't stop just because, the, you know, the weather is bad and, and I've got to uh, uh, be somewhere for someone or something and I feel sick. I don't get to turn around. There's usually only four to five people on the boat. I'm the coxswain. I'm driving the boat. I don't get to say, oops, I don't feel well. So there was a time um, years ago where we were doing some training for another debt from San Diego, uh, bringing up their Mark V. Mark V is an ocean boat, made for the ocean, had shock seats and full canopy and jet drive, drove with a joystick. Um, now, I, on the, other side, on, the other, on the other hand, was in a PBL, patrol boat light, made for rivers, 25 feet long, eight and a half feet wide, Boston Whaler, open. The gunnel would come up maybe two and a half feet, the, the side of the boat. Uh, there was nothing there. The coxswain station, we just had basically, I had like a, um, a bench, just a pad there that you can lean against because you're standing up the whole time driving. And they were coming up from San Diego. They're, they were going to drive their boat up, just get some, you know, training in. And we were going to meet them up in San Francisco. Now, San Francisco was a bay and ocean, not made for river boats. And our boat's a Boston Whaler. The Boston Whaler is basically, uh, it's the same craft that you'd see in civilian sites, just modified. Uh, unsinkable is really what they're made for. And we were gonna meet the Mark V debt out at what's called SF-1. SF-1 is the very first buoy coming into the San Francisco Bay to mark ships. So if you don't know how it works out in the ocean when ships come in, there's a first buoy, SF-1, and as they come in, then they start to get the buoys, the red and greens, going in all the way, and it, it lines them up to go straight under the Golden Gate and then into the, the, bay, uh, the, the bay. So they don't go aground, that's, that's your path. Whether it's a naval aircraft carrier or an oiler, they go through the middle. We were stationed uh, with the Coast Guard right there at uh, uh, the base of the Golden Gate. I think it's called Coast Guard Golden Gate, I think. I don't know. Uh, we were there with them, and we were gonna meet the debt, and this particular day, was a small craft advisory day, meaning that there were some really big swells out beyond the Golden Gate. And the Coast Guard wanted us to always let them know, hey, you know, just let us know where you're going in case you have any problems, give us a call, blah, 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 right? <clears throat> but you know, Coast Guard Navy, you know, we have words for the Coast Guard, um, puddle pirates, um, scared of deep water, uh, wannabe Navy, but you know, they do some great work. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, uh, bash my Coast Guard brothers and sisters. You guys do some great work. I saw you do a lot of saves out there when we were there uh, for those people out uh, in the bay. And you would come flying out and you just go out no matter what the weather. So good on you, good on the Coast Guard. So we're gonna go meet them at SF-1. And as we're leaving, we go and tell the, you know, the radio operator at the, at the Coast Guard station, like, hey, um, we're going to be heading out to SF-1. And he stops what he's doing. And he looks back, he goes, you're going where? We're all, yeah, we're gonna go out to SF-1. He's all, you know, there is a small craft advisory right now. We're like, yeah, we know. So we turn around and take our boats out. Now SF-1 is not close. It's out beyond the horizon. So it's probably, I'm thinking it's, 10 miles offshore, it's way out there, in the middle of the ocean. And before we left, what did I take? Dramamine. Because I heard it was rough water and I knew we were gonna be out in it. So I pop some Dramamine and we take off. And we kind of skirt along the coast. Um, there's two gigantic rock structures. Uh, what would it be? It'd be on the south side of the Golden Gate. And we shoot up those rock, we shoot between the two pillars of the rock structures, and we start following the buoys out. We just follow the buoys. And they're spaced pretty far apart. I think they're probably quarter mile, half mile apart. They're pretty far apart. So we start following these buoys, and we're going out. And as we're going out, we're getting these rolls. And I'm watching them as I'm driving across them, just rolling. 
and I'm just watching everything. And so I had, my chief was on my boat with me. He was right there next to my coxswain station on my right-hand side. And at a coxswain station, you have all your controls. I have my throttles. So I've got two twin outboards in the back. I've got two separate throttles. I've got um, two planing levers, which are at my thumb, so I can plane um, to, they sit right on the edges of the back of the boat, to, what would be a better word for it? A, um, um, what's that on the plane? The, um, uh, it's called a um, flap, not a flap. Trim, trim, dad, dog it, trim. <laughs> so I can trim the boat. And if we're, up, if we're up on step, we're kind of plowing through the water, I can push them up and it'll basically hit the water and push the nose down. So as we're going, I'm trimmed all the way up just to keep the smoothness of it, but I'm watching this. Now our boat, also I've got the steering wheel, you know, and then we've got two whip antennas. That's for our UHF and VHF. And these whip antennas are 16 feet and it's, it's up on the radio deck, which is above my head. So it's probably eight feet off the ground and then 16 feet from there. So 20 feet. So as we finally get out to SF1, we're now waiting for this Mark V debt to come up from San Diego. And you know, we're calling them on the radio. We can't get a hold of them. Don't know where they're at. And it's a certain time we were meeting them, whatever it was, one o'clock, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, whatever it was. And so we're there. But as we're there, it's just super, just bad water. Just, I'm flipping and flopping all over the place. So, and I'm, there's two of us. Whenever you go out, there's always two. Main boat, cover boat. There's no, there's, you never go out by yourself. And so what we had to do is we had to stay under thrust. We had to keep moving. And what we started doing is we started just circling SF1 at a loop of maybe a quarter mile, this huge circle around it over and over again, just so that we wouldn't capsize. I mean, they were that big of swells. As an example, as we're puttering around this, you know, as I'm going, you know, windward and leeward, as I'm going leeward away from the wind, it's smooth. Uh, what I do is I would, I would power up. This is how big the crests were. I would power up the crest, cut it, teeter totter over, and then I would skate down the other side. That's how big these waves were. And we're out there in little river boats, <laughs> 25 feet, eight and a half feet wide. And as we're doing this, you know, we started, me and my cover boat, we started going opposite one another because we couldn't stay together. It just was, we couldn't keep a, a position. Well, as he's moving around and hitting those swells and I hit him, I would lose him. I would, he'd go up, come down, I'd go up, come down and I couldn't find him. I'm like, where'd he go? And we, what we did is we signed one of our boat guys and say, hey, keep an eye on him so we always know where he's at because we don't know, we don't lose sight of him. If something happens, I need to know where he last was. So as we're doing this, my corpsman on the boat is getting sick. And believe me, before we left, I asked him, I said, hey, doc, you want some drama meat? In the Navy, corpsmen are um, medical people and the nickname for corpsman for a medical person is doc. Whether you are an E1 or an E9 master chief, you call him doc. So I was like, hey, doc, how are you doing? He's like, oh, I don't feel good. I'm like, I got some Dramamine. It was up inside the, the coxswain station. There's a, there's a console. There's a little cubby underneath it where all the control, where all the uh, electrical is for, you know, the comms and the, the setups right there. And my bag was in there with the Dramamine. So he's like digging in there trying to get to the dry. He's like, oh yeah, I need to take it. I'm like, go ahead, grab some Dramamine, man. So he goes in there, takes his Dramamine. I think he actually did uh, feed the fish a little bit in the back. But I'm like, wow, this is some jacked up water. And now I've got a radar and I'm watching the radar. And while I'm watching the radar, I see something about eight to 10 miles away, a blip kind of cutting along the shore. But I couldn't see what it was. Cause remember there's these swells. So as we're going up and down, I'm like seeing it, not seeing it, seeing it, not seeing it. It's just going in and out. And I don't have any good return to tell what it is. And we're calling them still on the radio. Like, Hey, whatever their, whatever their call sign was. Um, you know, Hey, are you here? You know, we're here. Where are you? And at one point, the water, the crests were getting bigger and it actually got to a point where I'm powering up this wave. And as I'm powering up, I'm not making it up fast enough. And this wave is bigger than me and I can't get up because if I were to, yes, if I were to just drop the throttles, I would jump off the other end 
a good 15 feet in the air and I would hurt a lot of people. So that's, you don't want to hurt your people. So I go and I'm powering up this wave and as I'm doing it, this wave crests right into the front of the boat. Now, as I'm standing there, remember, it's eight and a half feet wide, gunnel to gunnel. I'm standing really wide. I'm standing as wide as I can to keep my balance because the boat's going every which way. And I cannot take my hands off of the throttle's the right side. You never take your hand off the throttle. The wheel's not so bad, but you don't take care. You don't take your hand off the power. So I've got the throttle gold power up for hours. I think we're out there for three hours going circles around this. And finally, I'm like wide and I'm like, why are my feet wet? So I'm not looking down. I'm watching the waves. I'm trying to make sure that we don't turn over. Remember, I've got to steer into the waves. I can't get a broadside. We will flip 100%. And I look down and there's about a foot of water throughout the entire boat. And all and the, the switches for the bilges are right underneath my throttles. But I couldn't take my hands off the throttle. So I'm like, Chief, could you hit the bilges to pump the boat? He's like, oh, yeah. My feet are wet. They're wet. It is what it is. It's just, I, I'm, I'm here. I can't do anything about it. So finally we called it, so we're done. They're not here, we don't know where they're at, we're out of here. So we drove back, just flying, Phew, got out of there. We get back, we finally get them on the radio. They were the ones I saw cutting along the shore. And what they did was they said, yeah, the weather was really bad. Now remember, a Mark V is probably, let's see, we were 20, 45, 50 feet long. It's a big boat, big boat. They said, oh yeah, the weather was really bad. We didn't think you guys would be out there, so we just cut the corner. We're like, of course we were there. We were waiting for you for three hours. We thought they were late, we didn't know. So, moral of the story. Do boat guys get sick? Absolutely. Always carry Dramamine. Don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't. Think about you. I don't want to be seasick. <clears throat> and if you're counting on somebody else, another boat guy, <laughs> expect to wait. Because they don't always show up on time. But I just want to let you guys know, if you're liking the content that I'm putting out, you know, I want to make sure that we're putting out good content. Definitely hit that like and subscribe button. That just lets us know that you guys are actually enjoying what you're seeing. And it tells me we should put out more. We're working on some new great content. We hope you guys will definitely like it. But as always, on time, on target, never quit. Hoo-yah.